Welcome listeners to original strange fairy tales and other stories and to a journey back in time into the heart of Norse mythology. Today, we delve into one of the most ancient and revered texts of the old Norse tradition. This tale, originating from the poetic Edda, is a prophetic vision, an ancient poem spoken by a wise seeress, unveiling the creation of the world, the rise of gods, the conflicts they endure, and the ultimate prophecy of Ragnarok, the end of all things. Known for its vivid imagery, complex symbols and timeless wisdom, this poem has inspired centuries of storytellers, artists and scholars. As we embark on this reading, keep in mind that this translation, which I have made myself, aims to capture the essence of the original, bringing the ancient words closer to modern listeners. Prepare for a blend of mystic imagery and raw human truths as the seeress weaves her visions. And now, sit back and immerse yourself in this translation of an ageless tale from the poetic Edda. As I bring to you the Voluspa, or the prophecy of the seeress, enjoy. I ask for silence from all holy kindreds, greater and lesser children of Heimdall. Will you hear me, Valfather, wise and ancient of the old stories of men, for these are for the brave. I remember the giants, the ancient days, how they were both great and terrible. I am home at the ninth hour, in the heart of time, among the famous oaks below the scorching sun. In the old days, it was not known whether there was earth, neither sky nor sea. The earth was not yet formed, nor the heavens above, only the yawning void where the grass had no place. Before the sons of Burr raised the lands, they shaped Midgard, the realm of men. The sun shone from the south, on the stony halls, and the green earth bloomed in the sight of gods. The sun came from the south, with the moon beside it, hand in hand, over the heaven's road. The sun did not know where it would rest. The moon did not know its true course. The stars did not know where they would go. Then all the gods went to the great high seat, the holy ones, and discussed their deeds. They gave names to morning, to midday, to evening and night, marking the passage of time. The Aesir met at Idavol. The altars were raised, the halls were built, they laid their plans, they made their homes, they shaped the shores and made the tools. They played in the field, all were joyful. They had no need of gold or riches, until three giant maidens came forth, mighty and soft-hearted from Jotunheim. Then all the gods went to the great high seat, the holy ones, and discussed their deeds. Whose is the blame for the dwarfs? formed from the blood of Bremir and the limbs of Blain. There was Modsognir, the master of words, the mightiest of dwarfs, and Durin the second. They made many of their kin, dwarfs in the earth, as Durin had spoken. Ni, Nidi, the north and the south, east, west, Althiofer and Dvalin, Nar and Nine, Nipinga, and Dain, Bivor, Bavor, Bumbor, and Nori, An and Anar, Oin and Mjödvitnir, Veg and Gandalfa, Vindalfa and Thorin, Thrar and Thrain, Ikta, Lita and Vita, Nir and Niroda. Now I have spoken of the dwarfs, Regin and Rodsvida, their names are known. Feely, Keely, Findin, and Nali, Hefti, Vili, Hanar, and Sviur, Billinger, Bruni, B. 
Bilder, and Bury, Frar, Hornbury, Spurg, and Loni, Aurvanger, Yari, and Egebark. The dwarf spoke in Dvalin's hall to the lion kind, to the Lofar prince. They crafted the stone from the rock's depth. Aurvanger was sweet to Joruvala. There was Draupnir and Dolgthrasir, Har, Haugspori, Levanger, Gloin, Dori, Ori, Dufr, Andvari, Skirfir, Virfir, Skafider, Ai, Alfred and Ingvi, Ikinsjaldi, Fialar and Frosty, Finar and Ginar. This will continue until the ale flows, the long night is done, and the world is reborn. Then the mighty Aesir gathered, and they made their plans to send forth the great Cert, the flame of the world. The sky was lit up, the land was scorched, and the sun dimmed its light, and all that was once green was burnt and crumbled. The gods then knew that the time had come for the great battle of the end. The earth trembled, and the seas rose high, while the warriors gathered on the field. Now Loki came forth, and his bonds were broken, and with him came the giants of the north. The great serpent rose from the sea, and the wolves howled, the winds raged, and the skies were darkened. Then the sons of Muspel rode forth with flames, and the sword of Surt shone bright and terrible. The clash of swords rang out, and the earth shook with fear. Odin spoke, I will fight the great wolf Fenrir. With my spear in hand, I will strike down this beast and lead the gods to victory. But even as he spoke, the wolf's jaws opened wide. Vidar, son of Odin, rode forward with his mighty sword, and with one strike he slew the great beast. But then the earth itself groaned, and the sky split asunder. From the east came the giantess, with a crown of ice and snow. She spoke, The day has come when all will be destroyed. Even the gods will fall before the coming of the fire. Frigg, the queen of the gods, wept for the loss of her son. She knew the end was near, and she bade the gods to prepare. The skies burned with fire, and the land trembled beneath their feet. Then came the mighty Thor, god of thunder and storm. With Mjolnir in hand, he struck down the serpent, but even as he killed the beast, he was poisoned by its venom. And Thor, the son of Odin, fell to the ground. The gods watched in horror as their mighty warriors fell, one by one, slain by the giants and beasts. The world trembled and cracked, and the great ash tree shook. The sun grew dark, and the stars fell from the heavens. The earth sank into the sea, and the sky was rent asunder. The gods were defeated, and the final battle was over. But from the ashes of the old world, a new world would rise. The earth would be reborn, and the gods would return. Boulder, the shining god, would come back to the land, and peace would reign once more. The rivers would flow again, and the trees would bloom. The sky would be clear, and the sun would shine. The gods would rule once more, and the people would thrive. In the halls of Valhalla, the warriors who had fallen would feast and fight until the end of time. They would be honored, their deeds remembered, and the future would be bright. Thus spoke the wise woman, all is ended, but a new beginning awaits. The gods will return, and the earth will be renewed. And the gods listened, for they knew that the end of one world was the beginning of another. Then the great eagle flew, and the fire of the sun shone down upon the earth. The wind blew, and the oceans calmed, and the world was at peace. But the gods knew that this peace would not last forever for the wolf would return, and the giants would rise again. The battle would begin once more, and the earth would tremble. But for now, the gods rested, waiting for the time when they would have to fight again. 
Now Loki spoke. The time has come, and the world will burn. But the gods did not answer, for they knew that the end was inevitable, and the world turned dark. The skies cracked open, and from them came the fire. The gods turned their faces from the flames, and the earth was no more. The gods saw the end, and they knew that there was no escape. The great serpent would rise again, and the battle would continue. The gods would fall, and the earth would burn. And when all seemed lost, a new hope would arise. From the ashes of the old world, a new world would be born, and the gods would return. The great ash tree would rise, its branches reaching toward the heavens. The wolves would be slain, and the giants would fall. The gods would return, and the world would be reborn. The sea would calm, the skies would clear, and the sun would shine once more. The gods would reign again, and peace would return. And so the world would be reborn from the ashes of the old. The gods would return, and the battle would be fought again. Now I see the end coming, the great doom of the gods. But even as they fall, I know that a new world will rise. From the ashes of the old, a new hope will be born. The gods will return, and the earth will be reborn. The sun will shine once more, and the earth will be peaceful again. But for now, the gods rest, awaiting the end and the beginning of the new world. Now comes the final judgment. The gods will fall, and the world will be destroyed. But from the ashes, a new world will rise, and the gods will return. The battle will be fought again, and peace will reign forever. The great battle is over, but the war is not yet done. The gods will rise again, and the world will be reborn, and the peace will be eternal, as it was meant to be. The final battle is won, the gods have fallen, the earth is reborn, and the sun shines once more. The gods will return, and the world will be renewed. The sun will shine again, and the earth will be at peace. The gods will rise again, and the world will be reborn, and the peace will last forever. The ash tree of Yggdrasil trembled, the ancient tree shuddered, a giantess loosed. Panic swept all the way on the sacred roads, before Surtur the fire giant gobbled up everything. What will become of the gods? What of the elves? The roar of all Jotunheim will echo. The Aesir will gather in council. The dwarfs will groan. The stones will crash, and the world tree will tremble. Now Gama howls loud before Nipahela. His jaws are tightly bound, and the fierce one growls. I know what I will teach. I look forward to it when the smoke of the gods will spread wide. Hrim rides from the east. The snake moves swiftly. Yomunganda stirs in giant fury. The serpent gnashes its teeth, and the eagle will cry. The giantess weeps. The land sinks low. From the east come the Muspel giants, with their fiery burning swords, and Loki leads them. The brothers travel onward together to the field of battle. Surta comes from the south with a burning flame. His sword shines, the sun's enemies fall, the mountains crash, the giants fall, the earth will tremble, the sky will shake. Then Helene will grieve, and others will mourn with her. Odin will ferry the dead across the river, but the killer Belja, bright as Surta, then Frigg will fall in the halls of the dead. Now Garma howls loud before Nipahelia. His jaws are tightly bound, and the fierce one growls. I know what I will teach. I look forward to it when the smoke of the gods will spread wide. Then the great son of Sigfudur Vidar will strike against the beast of the earth. He will avenge his father and make the heavens tremble. Then the son of Hlodin will come, Odin's child, and slay the serpent in his path, killed by the wrath of Midgard's defender. 
Then the sons of men will rise against the giants. They will slay the beasts of the earth. The evil will be cast out. The sun turns black. The earth sinks into the sea. The stars will fall from the heavens. The fire will burn. The old man will burn. The winds will howling with the heat of the sun. Now Gama howls loud before Nipahelia. His jaws are tightly bound, and the fierce one growls. I know what I will teach. I look forward to it, when the smoke of the gods will spread wide. She sees them come again, the earth out of the abyss. The mountains will fall, and the eagle will fly over it. The fish will catch in the mountain streams. The Aesir gather at Ida Verla, and the earth judges them. The earth judges the deeds, the ancient runes of Fimbul's laws. Afterwards, the wonders will come. Golden tablets in the green grass, from ancient times, those who know the old ways. The fields will yield, the evil will cease, Balder will return. Herder and Balder, the great ones, will dwell in the halls of the gods. Then honey will work for the two brothers and build the lands of the wind. The halls will be seen, the sun will rise bright, and golden light will shine upon Gimle. The dwellers of that hall will be full of virtues and enjoy all good things for all eternity. Then the rich will enter and bring about their rule. They will lead the people with justice and wisdom. The mist will rise, the dragon will fly far and wide from the Nidafjöl, and the giantess will fall, the eagle will howl, and Nidurga will strike. The earth will tremble, and he will cleanse it. Thank you for joining me in this journey through the Voluspa, where we explored the fascinating prophecy of the end and rebirth of the world. I hope you enjoyed this deeper dive into one of Norse mythology's most profound texts. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more stories and explorations of ancient legends. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about the themes in the poem and how they resonate with you today. A special thanks goes out to the official fairy tale enthusiasts members of the channel who, for just $2 a month, support this channel and gain access to special perks, like downloading all the story illustrations in full 4K resolution as well as receiving this special thank you in the videos. Your support is invaluable in keeping the spirit of storytelling thriving. Thank you again for listening. And remember, every story has its ending, but the legends live on in the retelling. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the strange and the wonderful.